So the third album is fully already in the works. Like you have an idea, you have songs ready to go. Yeah, 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 wow. quite a few. But it's fun because okay. we'll get to this point and then I'll, I know I'm going to be out on tour all year this year. So I'm, I'm really going to just try to beat these songs, just keep writing and keep writing. And uh, that's the fun part of it. Just continuing to try to, um, you know, elevate and beat the songs that I have. Well, Tyler, let me just start by saying it's always a good day when we get to chat with you and there's new music coming out. I have to tell you, the last time I saw you was at Bowery Ballroom here in New York and you were playing your sold out show to a crowd for your debut album. Yeah. And I'm so excited to get to talk. I didn't get a chance to talk to you after that, but being in that crowd, that was just like the most special experience, like even as an audience member. I'm curious for you, take me back to that time. The last time I saw you, what was that like getting to play your debut album? Yeah, that was so fun. That was a really special show. I think that was the first show that I had after I put out my album. And so it was just, uh, yeah, it was surreal. It was really cool. It was a small, intimate setting. And yeah, I just remember getting off stage and being so pumped and just being like, that's how, I, you know, just obviously it wasn't my best show ever. It was my first show ever. So I was just kind of like, well, I got some work to do, but that felt really good. These songs feel really good. Like I'd hoped they'd felt live and just, uh, yeah, it was just sort of, it was a special night for sure. I'm glad you were there. And uh, yeah, that was, that was one for the books for sure. I'll never forget Haley bringing out a cake to sing happy birthday oh, yeah. to you and the entire crowd, which I'm like, how epic to celebrate your new album and your birthday all in one. Was that planned? Like, was that something that you had originally thought like this would be a great birthday party for me? I think some, in some capacity, I was like, yeah, that'll be a good, good reason to celebrate. Just combine the birthday and the album and just have a good old party. But uh, of course my wife went a little over the, over the top and uh, as she, as she liked, to do and just and celebrate so uh yeah that was fun i love that well we're excited to talk about new music and we've talked about this before i know so many of your audience you know your friends they know you from florida georgia line the music you created but now you're making these new albums you're making these projects you're playing these solo shows what's it like for you and how have you grown like as a person and as an artist like in these last few years of getting to really explore that and what that looks like yeah it's been really cool it's been a lot of uh self-discovery a lot of learning, a lot of growth, um, a lot of kind of reestablishing who I am and getting to be really authentic, getting to be real with, with who I am now, you know, and, and getting to kind of reintroduce myself, if you will, you know, as an individual and as a person and, and uh, really show the world who I am. So it's been really freeing. It's been a lot of fun. I've got to face some really cool challenges and uh, try to jump the hurdles that come my way and it's just been awesome really it has and, and getting to reconnect with the fans getting to go back and play shows like the bowery where they're just intimate they're packed with people and that's really i was reminded like that's where i fell in love with doing this whole thing the first time you know so getting to go back and rebuild and do it all over again it's it feels like a gift it feels like a blessing mm. um i've had so much fun with it it's really re-energized me and uh, inspired me. And I think that's a lot of where this second album came from was just that energy and that inspiration that I was able to pull from the fans really all last year. So I'm feeling really grateful. I'm happy to be here and uh, we're gonna keep it going. We are, I mean, your sophomore album Strong, like you said, is here. And I love the album, Tyler. Like, it takes me back to just like the things I love the most about country music, which is, you know, like a falling in love, relationships, like these interpersonal yeah. workings of your life, like being from a small town, all those things it represents. I feel like thematically, you kind of explore them all. Well, thanks for saying that. Yeah, I feel like it's a fairly dynamic album. I feel like, I hope that there's something on there for everybody, you know? I think that there's a lot of relatability. There's a lot of parts of the album where I get real, I get vulnerable. Um, share parts of my story that I maybe never shared before. And uh, and that's important. I feel like with every album, I want the fans to get to know me a little bit more, a little more deeply. And um, I feel like that's what this album does. So it's also a lot of fun. Like I said, I pulled a lot of energy from the live show and, and really kind of reverse engineered this project and created it to play live, created it for the fans and sort of by the fans, to be honest. And so uh, mm. uh, like 11 of the 13 songs were written out on the road last year. So we'd literally like get off stage. No way. And start writing songs and kind of um, doing what I love. But it turns out the majority of this album was literally written while I was out last year, you know, connecting with the fans. So it's uh, really cool. 
That's so interesting. What sort of like feedback were you getting from these live crowds that directed you to what you wanted it to sound and feel like? Yeah, good question. I think it was just really taking note of what songs were connecting with them, what they were, what what kind of energy my my new audience has, mm. uh, what they want to do. I felt like they just want to have fun. They just want to let loose. They want to connect with me and connect with one another. So there's some songs that are a little bit more with a little bit more depth to them, a little more heart to it. But for the most part. I just feel like my, my audience is uh, fun-loving people. They want to show up and have a good time and uh, celebrate life and leave feeling happy and joyful. And that's what that's what I want my music to do. That's what I want my music to uh, leave that kind of impression on people. And there's a lot of heaviness in this world, and a lot of darkness. So yeah. if I can be a little bit of light and a little bit of lightheartedness, you know, it, it's, uh, and fun, then I'm happy to be that guy. And so I feel like a lot of this album is, is kind of that. Where did you record the album? When did you record? Oh, you said it was kind of on tour. Who were like your, your partners you were working with? Like, what did that look like for you? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was written on the road um, with some of my favorites from Corey Crowder to Josh Miller, Casey Brown. Jordan Smith was out a lot with me, who's my producer as well, but an incredible songwriter. Matt Jenkins, I mean, Ashley Gorley, Jesse Frazier. Um, just lots, Kanan Smith, lots of people that I just love and consider family and um, been working with for years and nothing better than having them out with me on the road to to really like watch the show as well, connect with the fans, see what they're kind of be another set of eyes and ears to see like, hey, where where can this go from here? And what do we what do we want to say? What do we want to write? What do we want this music to feel like? And uh, mm. so that was a lot of fun, really kind of sussing that out on the road. But then coming back to Nashville, getting in the studio with Jordan, who's my producer and the studio musicians and really bringing these songs to life and adding that extra, the extra live elements, the, the, the musicians in town that are just the best in the world and to see where how they interpreted it and how they could kind of help elevate these songs and so had a lot of fun it was super efficient and relatively an easy process with jordan even easier than the first time we just really oh really we kind of had our system down we go and we track i think we tracked the whole album in like three days and then probably sang most of the vocals in like four or five days total so wow. um it, we were really efficient and effective and uh yeah, that's just how we've we've learned to be able to work that way. And uh, it's been great. So these songs, this album's probably been done. This album was done last year. You're so kidding. That no, always blows my mind. Yeah, it is. It's pretty wild. And timing is everything. And I'm glad we waited till the spring to put it out. But uh, I'm already excited about, you know, I'm always constantly writing songs. And so I already have a pretty good stack that I'm excited about for the third album. But that's oh, how far ahead we kind of we kind of get the process going, you know, and so uh, takes away the pressure and just makes it all pretty fun. So the third album is fully already in the works. Like you have an idea, you have songs ready to go. Yeah, 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 wow. quite a few. But it's fun because yeah. we'll get to this point and then I'll I know I'm going to be out on tour all year this year. So I'm, I'm really going to just try to beat these songs, just keep writing and keep writing. And uh, that's the fun part of it, just continuing to try to um, you know, elevate and beat the songs that I have. I love that. Well, we want to get to know this album a little bit better. So obviously Strong is out now. We're going to play a little album rapid fire. Cool. So I'm going to give you just like a little scenario and you tell me the first track that comes to mind. Ready. What is what is Haley's favorite on the album? It changes. It changes. I think it could be Wish You Would. I think that might be her favorite. Ooh, okay. I love that one. What about song that was the quickest to write? Good question. I don't really remember, but I believe Take Me Back was a pretty quick one. Okay. And I know, I actually know back then right now, came out really quick too. We had that yeah. song finished and demoed by probably three o'clock and I think we started at 11. So, wow. Uh, so that was a quick, that was a fun Nashville day. What's your current favorite on the album? I think mine is Wish You Would and maybe I said Haley's was Wish You Would just because that's my current favorite. But I think right <laughs> now, that's, that's the one that keeps like playing in my head right now. So uh, that's a fun one. What about a song that almost didn't make the cut for the album? Was there one you were teetering between? Yeah, 73 Beatle. Um, really? Yeah, just because... I'm surprised. I had to question myself because it's sort of st a standalone song, you know? It does it, it, it fits the project, but it's a little unique. It's definitely a classic country song. It's I was, wrote it by myself, so there's also that extra element of like, well, it, maybe it's not as great as these other songs that I wrote with other people. Mm. Um, but the more I thought about it, I was like, no, I feel like it needs to be on this project. It feels like it's kind of a continuation of Miss My Daddy on the first album, kind of a mm. continuation of that story and important to kind of let the fans in a little bit deeper on 
my story and my life and even the details of growing up in this car and what that what this car means to me and all that so i would say that that one was one that i was like oh we could take that one off and put this one on mm. but ended up rolling with a 73 beetle and leaving it on there and you know what i love that because like i said i feel like thematically we got to peek into your life as a full you know as a whole so i feel like that one ties it together too like it's a nice layered aspect that's awesome thanks for it's saying wild. That. okay what about what was the very first song you knew had to be on the album so the song a lot with a little i wrote that before i was technically finished with my debut album my first album so I really had to, and I knew like that day, I was like, I love this song. This feels like a heater. This is just like, feels like a big old hit to me. And so should I put it on the first album? Of course, I already had 18 songs on there. So I would have had to taken something off. I already felt like the album was a bit long. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to close this chapter. First album is done. I'm going to just mentally move into second album. And this is going to be, mm. and I'm going to already have a great start and a foundation with, and a direction with a lot with a little. And so, uh, so yeah, that was the first song that was kind of set the bar, the standard for what's, you know, this second album was going to be, which again, like I said, it's a lot of fun to, to just continually write. And, and then eventually you just have to close the door and say, okay, this album's finished and, uh, everything else is going to go into the next pile for the next project. Yeah. I guess, I mean, you have a, an end date where you're like, okay, I have to have this done by this point. So you have to decide, but I'm sure it's tough. To make those choices. It is tough. It is tough. But um, I was proud of that first album and felt like it was okay to kind of close that door on that and, and uh, let that one be wrapped up and move on to the second one. But, uh, yeah. and a lot with a little was a fun one to kind of have in my back pocket and know like, all right, this is the direction. We're, we're off to a good start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about, is there a song that has like a hidden meaning or like a secret personal tie? I would say Take Me Back is really personal. Um, it's a unique approach on writing a love song to your hometown. And I think up until the end of the chorus, you don't really know that I'm talking to my hometown. You think I'm probably talking to a former re relationship or something, but taking the dynamic of having a relationship with where you grew up is interesting to me. And I have a unique relationship with where I grew up in Georgia. You know, it's, I left when I was 18. I never really looked back. Um, I've been in Nashville now for 18 years. So half my life is here. This is my home now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think in our genre, it's very common to be not only proud of where you came from, but kind of like st still rooted there, you know, a lot of people. And, and so for me, I think there was a little bit of guilt there about like, man, like I just kind of pieced out. Like, like, you know, and other than other than having a couple of great friends back home, like there's really not much for me there. And I really just kind of left it high and dry and my dad passed away when I was 20 and then my mom moved to Alabama after she got remarried so there was just you know my life was sort of uprooted from Georgia and didn't have a whole lot of reason to really spend a lot of time there and go back and so um so yeah writing that and kind of letting people in on that was was uh was cool and it's definitely personal and it was just sort of fun to express my heart when it as it relates to my hometown and isn't it interesting like how we get older and grow up and you realize just how much of an impact like those years made on your life and you don't even realize it until you're like wait i'm an adult and like i know you have kids it's like watching that you're like wait this is a big part of me that maybe you don't even fully process until you're at this stage in your life yeah totally and i am i'm really proud of where i came from and I'm I wouldn't change a thing, you know, it made me who I am. And, you know, I sort of say that in the psalm, but sometimes it takes getting quite a bit older and, and living life to realize like, yeah, it was, you know, those lessons I learned in small town Georgia and the life that I lived and the way I grew up was really valuable and uh, yeah. I wouldn't want to change it for anything. Of course, you know, I'm a Georgia girl as well. So I'm right there oh, with for you. For real? <laughs> yes. That's cool, I didn't I'm know like that. I'm from like Dallas Aquarth area, like near like oh. Marietta. But yeah. I've been in New York for 10 years, so I'm like right there with you. It's like a weird thing. It's like, oh, the, my roots are here now. Right. I grew up in uh, Monroe, which you're probably familiar. Snailville, Monroe, Loganville, yes. that general area. So yep. not too yep. far from you. What about the song you get most rowdy to? Maybe Park. Park kind of That's gets my going. favorite on the album. It's my favorite it? one. Yeah, it's I so like Park. Good. It's so fun. It's like a, that's it's actually a one of my wife's favorites too. She said that Is quite it? a bit. Yeah, she loved that. I song, feel like that's so. one I was like, that was one I was like, okay, I have this one on repeat. I that's love that. awesome. What about the song you're most looking forward to play live? It's either Park because I hadn't played that one yet, and I do think it's going to be a rocker. Wish you would. We have played live, and it's a ton of fun. Night like that's going to be a lot of fun. I feel like there's one more that I'm really pumped on. Uh, American Melon Camp. That's going to be a jam too. Oh so yeah. I, all yeah. these tempos are just really fun to play live. I do think. Playing Strong will be cool. I love that song. I played it acoustic a time or two with the band and feel like, oh, this this song feels 
really good live. It's going to be really fun with the with the full band. So I'm excited. Tell me about the shows that you have coming up because I know you're going on tour with Kane Brown, which is so exciting. Tell me about yeah. what you guys have planned for us. Yeah, Kane Brown in the spring probably 30 dates with him and then I'm going to do uh, some festivals in the summer and then I'm going to headline in the fall and do um, a run of shows by myself and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun so kind of a dynamic year a lot of different types of venues and shows so uh, me and the band are excited okay by the way last question for you I feel like country music has had this huge shift everyone's going country Beyonce Woo! Lana Del Rey Post Malone what, what do you think of, about all of this happening with country music I love it. The more the merrier, you know. I think if uh, Beyonce thinks country's cool, then bring it on, you know. I love I love it. I think it's great. It's probably bringing more people to the format and uh, expanding our genre. And it's, it's cool to see, you know. I've been around this genre for a while. And for a long time, you know, I feel like a lot of pop artists didn't even know what country music was. And now they're country music fans and country music creators. And it's just... Uh, it's really wild to see and, you know, kind of makes me proud to definitely makes me proud to be a part of this genre. And think of all the collabs that could come out of this. Oh, yeah. It's collab city nowadays. It's pretty funny. Collab Everybody's city. collabing. <laughs> I like it. I'm excited Literally. to get back into the, uh, you know, I hadn't had any collaborations on my first two albums and that's been really intentional. But I think I'm now getting to the point, at least really close to where I feel comfortable getting back into collaborations and working with other artists. And I think it's going to be a... Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We well, already have that third album on the wrap, so we better get to move with the collabs. Let's you already well, it's we one out my head. <laughs> gotta get them rocking. Yep. Well, Tyler, you're the best. Thank you so much for your time as always, and congratulations on this new project. We're so excited for you. Thanks, Emily. You too. I appreciate your time and uh look forward to seeing you again.